First thing is, I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm opinionated. I just saw a video of, and I'm not supposed to use the word idiot for some reason, but the TV station seemed to just told me to be me. So some idiot was in his front yard because he's mad at our stance in Israel. So he was burning as an Israeli flag, and then he burned an American flag. Listen, brother. <laughs> I, I, you know, I think everybody from Dixie ought to come up and just stomp mud hole in his butt and just be done with that because that's just ridiculous. Yeah, if you don't want to live in the United States of America and be free, go live in China and let them tell you what to do. But don't desecrate our flag. Don't desecrate our country. And don't desecrate our God. That, that's simple. Amen? <laughs> And we have a really major problem up here this morning. Oh, no, we don't, because I feel them. Where are they? <laughs> now we can go. All right. Do you think that knowing God's will for your life is important? Think about that for a minute. Do you think that knowing God's will for your life, I don't mean Christy to tell me what the sheriff's, will for or God's will is for the sheriff. What God's will is for you. Not your neighbor, not your son, daughter, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, but what is God's will for you? And the reason why I stress that for you is because too many people try to make excuses why they can't do God's will, or they make excuses as to why they won't because their wife may not like it, or their husband may not like it, or they may hurt somebody's feelings. And, and I'll tell you as a pastor, and I don't know if Pastor Carter's experienced this or not, but believe it or not, there's a lot of people that have come into church on Sunday morning and go, praise God, hallelujah, amen. Way to go, pastor, I love this church. But as soon as they walk out from this building on Sunday, they're not telling anybody about Sunday morning at church. They're not telling anybody that they're a Christian because, see, they don't want people to think that they don't want people to think they're one of them. They're one of them, those C words, Christians. If I had to rely what was on TV on Sunday morning with these guys preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, I don't think that I would leave either and tell anybody I'm one. But there's good churches out there with great con congregations. I personally have to think this is the best one in the world. Um, and they do it right. Don't be ashamed of going out, and, and we'll get into that in a minute. Don't be ashamed to go out and profess your love for God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because if you do, you will be rewarded. All right? Is knowing his will important to you? How would you rate the importance on a scale of 1 to 10? 1 being the least and 10 being the best. How important on a scale of 1 to 10 is doing God's will in your life? God's will, not yours. The test of being a, a good and true disciple. Disciple is a Latin word, and it means follower. So what is it and what does it mean to be a true disciple of an almighty God? Now, it goes without saying that the one person who exemplified and demonstrated the perfect will of God is his own son. He lived for a purpose of fulfilling his father's will, and he always did what was pleasing to God. See, he never came and did what was pleasing to him. He had pain, agony, blues, slandered, humiliated, mocked, murdered, but then rose. But then rose. But he did God's will from the giddy up to the end. No exception. Whether he wanted to or he didn't want to, he did it because he knew it had to be done because that's what God demanded. Ended up good for us, though, didn't it? One man's sacrifice. Remember Thursday night we said one? It takes one. It takes one pastor, one church, one anything. He used Moses, one. Abraham, one. Isaiah, one. Jeremiah, one. Jonah, one. He picks one because one can build a nation. One can change this earth. One can change this world. One can change it 
so that we get back to that daggone cross and get splitters in our hands from hugging it so tight. It takes one. Who wants to be that one with me? Because that's two. Who wants to be the next one? Then that's three. Who wants to be the next one? Then that's four. Then that's five. Now we got a movement. Now we've got a movement. Now we change the world. But it takes the start of one. Be courageous and be that one regardless of what anybody else says. Because in reality, it really doesn't matter what anybody else thinks of you. It's just an opinion. An opinion are like, mm, everybody has one. Amen? <sighs> so Jesus said, John 8, 28, 29, When you have lifted up the Son of Man on the cross, then you will understand that I am He. I do nothing on my own, but say only what the Father taught me, and the one who sent me is with me. He has not deserted me, for I always do what pleases Him. I always do what pleases Him. Jesus put self, the Son put Himself on the back burner of life so that He could praise and glorify one, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first the last, the only true God. He put everything in His life on the back burner because He knew that one would make a difference. And here's the other thing. Everybody in this room, there's people in here and there's people out there, and, and this is honest. We're going to have probably somewhere between 1.6 and 2.5 million people watching this today. Here's the truth. There's people out there that think they're immortal. They think that their kids are immortal. Nothing's going to happen to them. They think that it doesn't matter what they do in their life, that everything's peachy. Uh-uh, wrong. Because I got a newsflash for you. One out of every one person that's hearing my voice or seeing me right now is going to die an earthly death. No exception. You are going to die. That's hard to comprehend, isn't it? But you're going to. You are not immortal. But you can be immortalized by being the guy or the girl that steps up to the plate and hits that grand slam for God. You can be immortalized by the music that you do, by the words that come out of your mouth in song that praises and worships God. You can be immortalized by saying something as a pastor that reaches the soul down deep into a sinner that never thought they had a chance, that was alienated not only by their country, their city, their town, but their own family and friends. You can be that voice. So be the voice of the voiceless. And here's a fact, Jack. Don't do it in 10 minutes. Right now is as good a time as anything to, any, any time to do it. Start your conversion now. Because when you leave, we got crazy drivers in here. You may get hit in the parking lot this afternoon trying to leave the church. Do it in here. Start it right now. Be that one. Because it only takes one. And God wants you. He's got plans for you. No matter how young you are, no matter what you did, God has a plan. And trust me, his plan's a heck of a lot easier than anything we can write down on a piece of paper and think that what we want for ourselves. Amen? I've been <clears throat> doing this for a while. And I know that uh, one of the most important things that I know in the Bible, I, all the Bible is important to me, but the one thing that makes my hands, the hair on my arms stand up out of fear, the Bible teaches us to fear God because we should. We should love Him, but we should also fear Him. The Bible says that even Satan believes and trembles. Satan himself is afraid of God. He's not afraid of you because he knows that we're weak. He's strong. There's a song about that. I won't sing it because everybody will leave. But here's the most critical question for you because Jesus saying that doing God's, the, the will of God is the two, true test of allegiance to our ticket to paradise and our safety on earth, our kids' safety, 
on earth, our prosperity on earth, or it could also lead to demise. That's biblical, folks. That's biblical. But Jesus saying this demonstrates how critical it is, and it's in Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Does that not make you just think, oh, I'm a good person, <laughs> see you in hell? Because it takes more than being a good person. It takes abiding by the laws that God sent us and doing whatever God tells us to do because it's His will for us to get to heaven. He's just given us a blueprint to do it. So, get over yourselves, you're not that important, and give it to God. Amen? Jesus makes it plain. Plain, simple, black, white, red. Doing the will of God is essential. Thus, knowing he will, His will is paramount for how we can do what which we do not know. Jesus go on to say that many will come to him in that final day and be turned away. Why? Why will you be turned away? You're not going to be turned away if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, baptized and got to the cross and repented. But you also have to do the will of God. Well, you do the will of God when you accept Jesus Christ to be baptized and repent. Amen? But God's got certain plans for each individual's life. Whether you like it or you don't like it, whether you think it's relevant or, re or irrelevant, whether you think it's fair or not fair, God has a plan. Anyone kind of getting the point here this morning? We all need to get over ourselves. But here's the thing. A hero dies but one death. A coward dies them all. Amen? Die a hero. How can you die a hero? Abiding in God's law. Abiding in his law. Obeying it. Doing what he wants. And there is a crown of life for you for eternity. Safety and assurance for you and your family while you're here on earth and a crown of life when you go to the mansion in the sky. And Jesus promised that. So it's there. Amen? Anybody just see me almost poke myself in the eye with my glasses? Knowing that God's will is essential is paramount for how we can do which we do not know. Some people say, well, that's not fair. Well, I, I don't think I want to do that. I, look, we don't know. That's what we think. That's not how he thinks. Because he's far greater than anything we could ever be. Amen? Jesus go on to say that many will come to him and be turned away. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name. We perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me. You break God's laws. Matthew 7, 22, 23. You think you're doing the right thing because you're human, because you're flesh and bone. Because you want approval of man more than you want approval of God. You want that big house. You want popularity. You want everything that you want, and you could give no sense to what God wants out of selfishness. God is the ruler and has the key to everything. We don't. He's the master locksmith of our lives. We're the guys that sit back and get rusted where a door can't open anymore. It's our jobs. It's our jobs. We have messed this up so bad. This generation. This conspiracy-filled generation of everything's everybody's fault. We can't do anything about it. Well, i got to tell you something, son. i got a voice. I can do something about it. There's two and a half million people watching that says this church can do something about it. Then let's go do something about it. Get your panties out of a wad, pull up your pants, tighten your belts and your suspenders, and let's go get it. Let's change this world. Because frankly, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of how they threw God in the waste can and just disowned him. 
I'm sick of how God has been taken out of His own building called the church. I'm sick of how Jesus has been taken out of people's homes. And I'm sick and tired of how many people think they can't do the will of God because it's not convenient for them. I don't think for one split second that God sent Jesus to the cross because it was convenient. It was necessity that did it. Not convenience. Necessity. Because that's the only thing that could have changed this world is to do that. And that, my friends, makes me cry. It makes me cry because of what he had to go through because I feel like I lived it with him. But it makes me cry and it makes me want to puke every time I watch TV or I hear people use his name in vain. Tell me they can't when God said you can. Tell me that you're worthless when God says you're worth everything. Or tell me this is what they're going to do because it's good for them instead of what God wants. He did it. He did it. Stand up and do it. How hard is that? How hard is it to put you on the floor and lift God up? Who in here has ever had a miraculous healing? I know two. I know Ted and and Lindsay, they shook their hands. Joni, Bernie, congestive heart failure. Joni, three weeks ago, they didn't know she was going to live or die in the hospital. She could do a jumping jack right now. She's moving better than she ever did. That's not made up, folks. There's medical records to prove it. See, that's called, Joni does the will of God every day. She's healed. Bernie supposed to have died. You guys don't know this. What, four months ago, five months ago? Four months ago. He sat next to his almost beautiful wife, Joni. They're my in-laws. That's why I say that. She's beautiful. He's sitting next to his beautiful wife, Joni, because he does the will of God. They're together today. They both should not see Christmas this year, medically. Ted should not see Christmas. He coded. They had to bring him back to life, right, Ted? Lindsay, these people shouldn't be here for Christmas 2023. (laughs) But see, they know something I know that most of you don't. They know God. See, God's not out of the miracle business. God's not out of the healing business. God is still, to this day, and will forever be the great physician. Doctors say no. God says, (laughs) oh, you feeble-minded little man, watch me. Watch me. You don't understand, but we understand in heaven. We understand. The people with faith understand what's happening. The people that know me, the people that do my will, understand what's going to happen. You want your kids to be safe. You want no harm to come to them. You want them to live long lives. I will suggest this easy thing for you right now today. Get on your hands and knees sometime today. Or get in front of God and say, God, I know what you want is yours. I know how to protect me and my family. God, it's yours. I'm I'm going to do your will. This is how it works. And I will do it with no sadness in my heart. I will do it because it's what's meant to do. We can change this world. We can. But do you want to? Are you happy the way things are? Are you? Are you happy the way things life goes? No. But we can change it because the Bible says we can. And I happen to believe that. Now notice in Matthew 7, 23, that Jesus says that if you do not follow God's will for your life, it it says you break God's laws. You break God's laws. The root word in Greek is pneumonia. Also means disobedience. Not following his will is the same as committing lawlessness, inequity, or breaking God's law. In other words... Many will come to God at the end of his life trying to gain access to the kingdom by means of their own work. These unfortunate souls will show up at the gates of heaven 
without the little digital passcode and their access is going to be denied because they thought they were doing something but they knew they were going to God's will access denied beep beep freaking beep not getting in <sighs> Scripture says that they will be refused entrance because Jesus teaches there is only one work that is acceptable to God. In John 6, 28, 29, they replied, we want you to perform God's work too. What should we do? Jesus told them, this is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. Scripture says that the only work of God is to believe in his son. But knowingly, he said, I already believe. Ah, but do you? What does believing in the son really mean? Jesus says there are only many who profess to believe in him, yet don't. But they will profess from their mouth that they do. They'll want to appease God by saying, I'll do what you want. They want to say from their mouth, all the good little fluffy candy-coated things that they can to try to trick God into thinking that they're this little goody two-shoe doing God's work. Uh-uh, that doesn't fly because you need to remember something. God knows. Man, you can fool. God, you can't. Zero times, none. He, the book of Isaiah says he has an eye on us, and he does. In your shower, in your bathroom, in your bedroom, in the car driving down the street, in this church, in your prayer closet, anywhere that you are, there's God. Be careful what you think or say, because he knows, and you will be held accountable for it. They will even argue a point with God, showing him all the things they did on his behalf, but also telling God things that they don't believe in. It can't happen because I don't believe in that. And then God will tell them, it's not up to you to believe. It's up to you to believe in me. Not the circumstances, but the king. They will debate their case and even describe how they lived their life for him and why they should let him in the kingdom. His reply will be, depart from me, I never knew you. That's pretty scary, isn't it? So go ahead and live your life, you Kardashian wannabes you. Live your life the way that you want to live your life. Do what you want to do, you and your family. But you want to put a blanket of lifelong protection around your family, around your children, around everyone. There's one thing that you can do, and it's really easy. Submit to God's will. Then everything will be just hunky-dory. You are not, these are not the words you ever want to hear from God. And if it is indeed our Lord and Master, he never shall. Jesus is essentially telling folks, you never truly believed in me or my Father. Because if you did, when you entered these gates, I would have welcomed you with open arms. But you didn't. You self-centered soul. We go on TikTok, we go on Facebook, we go on all these things, and we see these people with million views or more. I guess I shouldn't say that because I have a million views or more. Um, but mine are different. Every one of mine glorifies God, not glorifies John. These people want you to buy a product that's about skin or sex or alcohol. Is that glorifying God? It's making them richer, and then people look at them and go, wow, how'd they do that? I want to do that. They're so rich. If you have God in your heart and you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I promise you, you're far more richer than any Jake Paul could ever be. Far more richer. And you can actually look in the mirror as an elderly person or a younger person and look at yourself with respect, knowing you haven't intentionally went out and hurt anybody. You haven't influenced somebody to be promiscuous or to be a drunk, or, or to be a drug addict. You haven't done those things which would absolutely be an abomination in the eyes of an almighty God. You went out and tried to retain 
and help people and guide them to that cross. My opinion, guys, that's a hero. The other people, in my opinion, eh, zero. Choose. You want to be a zero or a hero in the, in the eyes of the Lord? Unfortunately, there's many in our modern generation that make what uh, their lives out of what the world means to them instead of what God means to them. Webster defines the word believe as to accept or regard something as true. The modern definition is not even close to what the Greek word for belief means as used by Jesus and God. The Greek word for believe is the word pisteo, which used in the context in this scripture means to have faith in one person and to commit to that person. When you unpack the root word of pisteo, you will see that it is indeed derived from a verb. And that verb centers around the words. Ready for this? Obey, trust, put confidence in, and yield to. When you unpack, or simply put, it's, an act, it's a verb that's an action word verb. <laughs> I'm pretty smart, aren't I? <laughs> I, I even know mathematical figures. In other words, believing in Christ, it is synonymous with trusting, obeying, and yielding to God's will. Therefore, when we trust, obey, and yield to a place our confidence in his will, he demonstrates what we believe in by rewarding us. By rewarding us with what our deepest desires of life are, according to his will. Healthy children, prosperous home, health, anything that you want. God says that if you submit to his will. Now, I'm not going to tell you that if you submit to God's will, you're going to be a millionaire. But if you submit to God's will, I promise you, we have one, two, three, we have five, four people for sure in here that medically, and this is the truth, folks, medically shouldn't be here for this Christmas, but they are. And I'm sure their, their families are very thankful for that too. Their faith and belief in doing God's will, knowing that God's power superseded any word, advice, or medical history that any doctor could give them. This isn't me some pastor out here that when I'm done with this, I'm going to say, go to our website and donate $1,000 so we can spread the gospel more and you can hear more testimonials like this. Uh-uh, I'm not that cat in a cowboy hat. I'm just a guy up here that's going to spew the word of God the way it's supposed to be made. So if you're wanting to send a donation to this church based on you think that if you do that you'll be healed, put your money back in your pocket and go buy somebody a nice Christmas present. But if you want to donate to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, and you don't want to donate to this church, go to your local church and keep those churches open. Keep the doors open. Give these people a place to go to learn about the true, unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. That's pretty well said. When we doubt him, when we doubt him, disobey his will, follow our own agenda, and restrain what God promotes as what he will do for us. God won't do. If we go against his will after we've seen his healings, after we've seen his mercy, after we've seen his miracles, God no longer will grant you what you want because you've turned your back to him. You've disobeyed what he wants, what his son wants. You've disobeyed everything that there is. And God will find a way to humble you. He will find a way to humble you, to bring you back to him. That's just the way it is, because that's God, because he can and he will, because what God wants, simply put, God gets. So why don't we just sit back, relax, let go, and let God. Amen? Cut it out. To do the will of God is believing. Jesus said that believing in him is to trust God with every decision, to obey God's every command, and to yield our will for God's will. That is what it truly means to believe. 
Believe that God really does want your own interest at hand. God really does want to see you in heaven. God really wants what's best for you. The problem is we don't even know what's best for us. We need to sit back, listen for God, listen for the Holy Spirit to touch us, we'll listen for the Comforter to come, let them speak to us so that we know exactly where, when, and how to improve our lives, but also improve the lives of our family and our neighbors and our neighbor's neighbors. Now listen, your neighbor, trust me on this one, yeah, your neighbor isn't the guy or the girl next door. Not everybody has two Karens living next door to them. I'm going to shut my mouth. But one day, one day, our neighbor could be in Ukraine or in Israel. Our neighbor could be in California or Pennsylvania or Maine. Our neighbor is anyone that's accepted Jesus Christ. They're our brother and our sister in Christ. We're one with God. You should go out and try to help and heal those people. As Christ testified in many scriptures, only those who truly believe will inherit the kingdom of God. There are so many who are going about this life completely clueless as to what their true purpose in life are. They're not being obedient to the will of God for their life, primarily because they don't know what his will is for their life, because they're too concerned about what they want, not what he wants. They're too concerned about what they have not what he can take. They're too concerned about narcissism, narcissism, ego, and self-pity than to worship a God that can take every bit of that away from them. They're too worried about what people think. I say this, you know, I say a lot of things over and over and over. I say this over and over and over to give people confidence. Listen, I mean this so much, guys. If your friends or enabling you to do bad things. If you're a drinker and you're hanging around friends that drink, you're going to get corrupted again sooner or later and you're going back to the bottle. Hang around like-minded people. The Bible tells us to do that. A bad, a, a bad fruit will spoil a good fruit. And stop worrying about what people think. They don't sleep with you. They don't clean your house. They don't cook your food. And they're not going to pay your bills even if you knocked on their door and asked them to. Start worrying about what God could do for you and watch everything else fall in place because it's promised that it will. Jesus says in the Bible, we do God's will, we're good to go. We're going to be plentiful and prosperous. If we don't, he's going to say, I don't know you. Good luck with that. I don't want Jesus to tell me good luck with that. I want him to hug me and say, way to go, brother. That's what I want. God's will is difficult to know. Perhaps you've been taught that knowing God's will is extremely difficult. It's actually not that difficult. Why would God make following his will the chief requirement for entering the kingdom of, of heaven and then make it super difficult for us to know what he wants us to do? The answer was, he wouldn't. And he doesn't. You just don't like it. You just don't like it. You don't like what God wants you to do. You don't like where God, wants you, where, where God wants to steer you. You don't like what the outcome is without knowing what the true outcome is. You think you do, but newsflash, you're not God. You're just not God. This time of year, I'm going to end this in saying this. Listen to God. I, I, I actually do believe that people hear God. I don't believe that Joyce Meyer, Benny Hinn, Paula White, Creflo Dottor, and T.J. Joe, I don't believe they do, but I believe one day they will, because I don't think that God is sitting on Benny Hinn's bed, like he professes, saying that he needs to raise $5 million for his ministry. I don't believe that for a second. I believe that God should be in Benny Hinn's bedroom going, quit committing adultery, quit taking away people's money that don't have it, and why don't you try to serve me for once because you have a platform of millions change their lives. Do it for the glory of me instead of the glory of Benny. 
my opinion. But I'm going to say this as I leave. Christmas. Christmas is a tremendous holiday for everybody. But Christmas is also a time of year where the suicide rate is extremely high. If you guys see anybody that's sad, depressed, hurt, talk to them. Pray with them. If they won't talk to you, have them reach out to one of the pastors up here in the church. We will spend whatever time is needed to try to help them, to comfort them, and to let them know that they're not alone in this difficult time. Unfortunately, Christmas has become about monetary, monetary needs, about buying the big gifts. Some families can't afford to buy anything. That leads them, especially if they have children, that leads them into an incredible depression. They can't provide the meals. They can't provide the, you know, the Christmas for their kids that they want. People, I've got a newsflash for you. There are churches out there that absolutely care. There's pastors out there, and there's congregation members out there that absolutely care. That's called being a Christian, and that's called being a servant to an almighty God, and that's called accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's called sympathy for human beings. That's called being the voice of the voiceless, being the help for the helpless. That's called being compassionate. But more important, that's called being God's. We're required to do that. So if you see somebody sad, if you see somebody hurt, if you see somebody acting different than what they normally are right now, don't assume they're okay. Assume they're not. And take the time to go reach out to them and say hi. Tell them you love them. Tell them that everything's going to be okay. Tell them not to worry about anything. Life's going to be just fine because they're going to be gathered around with like-minded people that will help them. And very loudly, very loudly for the neat TV shows, if God was in this room right now, he would say... Amen.